Red Wings fans stand up Yeah, we gonna throw them wings up Wings up, wings up Show the league that this is our time Let's make the city proud We gonna win the Stanley Cup Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup After that we gonna party We go show everybody We show them all around the world We show them all around the world We show them all around the world We gonna throw them wings up We gonna throw them wings up on uh. First off, very excited to be back. Um, I think every time uh, you come back for training camp and, and, and you come in with with a mindset that you want to stick, and uh, I've went down with the right attitude. I, I've played really well. I've played hard, and uh, I've contributed offensively while while keeping a uh, defensively strong game. And I think that's that's what you need at that level is prove that you can play uh, defensively sound, and then chip in when you can. What was the message from the team, from the organization, when, when you were sent down? Was it from them? I mean, I don't want to put words in their mouth. What did they say? It was very positive. Um, they, they really liked how I showed up uh, to camp in shape. Uh, I thought I had a really good summer, uh, really good off season. Um, and then they just said, go go be Joe. Uh, go play with a little bit of swagger. Um, go go uh, you know, almost mentor some young guys. Uh, this is my fourth year uh, pro, sixth year in the organization. Um, you know, I've learned from a lot of a lot of good players, and, and and kind of take that leadership role. And have you been encouraged by what you've seen from the, some of those young kids? Yeah, they, they got a lot of skill. Um, when, once they they figure out the pro game, which I, I think it's coming really soon, uh, they're going to be really good players. Um, you know, in the in the National Hockey League, and I think uh, as an organization, that's all you you hope for. You want to see guys succeed because. Um, you know, when they succeed, you as a team succeed, and collectively, uh, I think we're all in that, on all, all in this together, uh, trying to win a championship at the end of the day. You, you, you got to see this as an opportunity each time you come up here, right? I mean, a chance to show them that hey, I stick, I belong here, I belong to stick here. So. Definitely, it's an opportunity. Um, it's about proving every day that you, that you can be, you know, one of the best six defensemen in the organization, and and that's that's a chance that. I know ever since I signed, that's all I ever wanted was an opportunity. I've got a couple. Hopefully, uh, I can make uh, this one, uh, this chance, stay a little longer. So, what's it been like for you to get out there and uh, you know compete and play at this level and be a part of the Detroit Red Wings? Uh, it means a lot to me. It's, you know, worked really hard to get to this league and get to this moment. And it's going to be playing out, you know, especially in this arena with all these fans, and it's, you know, it's great. It's, it's surreal, but. At the same time, it's hockey, and I try to win hockey games. Your line's been pretty good out there. I mean, you've been grinding it out in the offensive zone. Is that basically uh, what your job is all about? Yeah, it's, that's my style of play. I like to hold on to pucks and protect pucks down low and, you know, help make plays and help score goals and also be physical. So it's, our line's doing what I expect to play, and that's, that's how I expect to play here. Talk about uh, not only being good in the offensive zone, but the responsibilities of being a solid defensive player as well. Yeah, it's uh, really important, especially in this league. And even when coming from the AHL, defense is, you know, that's what matters. You have to take care of your own zone before you can go in the other zone. So I know Blash, he also, he preaches defense, good defense here. So I was really working on my defense and I'm going to keep it going. What makes your line so effective right now? Uh, I think we're all... We work pretty hard. You know, we have some big bodies with skill too, and have a lot of speed in our lines. So we can, you know, match up against the biggest D, the smaller D, anyone that's really matter. We're gonna go out there and you know, hand them in their zone and just play a pistol game, strong game. Seems like the Red Wings uh, were having difficulty scoring, but uh, put four on the board the other day. What did you think was the difference? Uh, it's momentum. As you can see in the third period, we know we got we had some momentum swings there. We killed up a penalty, and you know we had some good shifts, and then carried on. And Larkin's line went out there, and they they did what they had to do, and they scored. And the boys saw that and just lit all our spirits. And you know, it was an exciting game to be a part of. Giovanni, when you watch a guy like Dylan Larkin play, what do you see from him? It's just tenacity, with the puck and without the puck. You know, he's always working. He's doing he's doing that extra. The extra thing you don't see guys really normally doing out there, and so it's impressive for you to see he's a young guy, and you know that's our leader. So it's, it's nice to see from him. 
Let's go back to your earlier years. Was there a particular player that uh, you wanted to hone your game around? Yeah, there's a few. You know, studying my game off of Wayne Simmons, obviously Abby too. Watched him a lot. Tom Wilson. You know, but also that like Evgeny Malkin with his puck, his puck handling skills and you know skills with the net. Watch certain guys and then, you know you see how they play and just add that to my game. Just gotta be a student of the game. What's it gonna take to shut down the Edmonton Oilers? I mean, I know you guys are on a losing streak, so I'm assuming the confidence is down in the locker room. It's gonna take a strong 60 minutes. You know, obviously Edmonton's a good team. They got really good players. McDavid's a good player, but if we slow them down, get in front of them, you know, stick to the game plan, I think we should be fine. Is there something that's not clicking? I mean, what's happening? I mean, I know we need more shots on that, but what's going on? I've only been here for, you know, two games, so I can't say I can't test everything else, but so far when I've been here, the game's been pretty close, and, you know, we're working hard. The score's pretty close, and we just have to, you know, capitalize on our power play. The acquisition of Perlini, what do uh, you think he brings to the team, and uh, you know, when, is, when do you think he'll make his debut? Uh, well, he's not going to play tonight. Um, he'll uh, he's traveling over uh, from Chicago to Detroit today. Uh, get a chance to watch the game. Get a chance to practice on Thursday. Come down and, and hopefully uh, play on Friday. That's our plan uh, in Carolina. Um, you know, I had a chance to speak with him last night. I've, sp I've spoken with uh, some of his past coaches. Um, it, it doesn't take much to watch him on tape and see he's a he's a big guy who can really skate and really shoot. So he's got a very, very good skill set. That's why he went 12th overall. Obviously, he's been on two teams where it hasn't necessarily gone great. Um, he's on his third team. I think sometimes when guys go through struggles, uh, they can come out stronger on the other end, and that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that um, with the opportunity he's going to have here, um, with with the, the learned uh, things that he's had to go through and, and learned along the way that he can come in here and uh, make a make a big impact for us, but we'll see. Or make an impact, I should say, but we'll see. So you're bringing up Joe, too. What was the reasoning there? What was the thought process there? Well, we've been kind of in a spot a little bit on the left side where, um, you know, we don't have any other lefties, uh, so you can't... Uh, you basically just have to play the three guys that you have, and, and I wanted an opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, I heard Joe's played very well down there. Joe brings two things to the table all the time. He brings swagger and confidence, and uh, I got a different word, but I'll use those two, swagger and confidence, <laughs> and we need some swagger and confidence. He's always brought that. What my understanding, speaking with Steve Eisenman, speaking with Ryan Martin, speaking with Ben Simon, is that he's done a much better job, and I thought he did this in preseason, of playing with that swagger and confidence within the structure of the system. And that, that's the step that I think he's taken, um, according to what I saw in preseason in the reports. And if he has taken that, I think he can help us. I mean, really, you know, Joe's a guy that's easy to discount and say, you know, he doesn't look like an NHL skill set from a size skating standpoint. Um, but he's got those other factors that sometimes overcome everything. So we're going to give him a chance to play tonight, and we hope he plays great. You just got a good look at this Edmonton team, that top line. I mean, the way your top line has carried you guys, but that is, I mean, what they do over there. How elite has that top line been? And, and how special are they to watch? Well, I mean, one, it just it doesn't take much to look at the points to know how elite they've been. I mean, they've been and the record that follows it. You know, like, uh, you know, if you look at the, the their 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 group over there, they, they've had that top line really producing. Um, obviously, the second line has produced and some of that's on the power play with James Neal. But I think Nugent Hopkins is an elite second line center. Probably doesn't get enough recognition. Like when he can be the second line center, he's an elite second line center. Um, you know, Neal's played well for them. Um, and then, and then they've had good goaltending and good structure to go along with that goaltending. But the top line carries them. I mean, that's just the reality of a lot of teams in this league, and certainly is theirs. And, and you know, I've been impressed with the maturation process. But the guy I've seen more uh, uh, firsthand probably is, is Dry Side. I've, I've watched. I got a chance to watch him a number of times in Worlds. I've, I've been around him on a regular basis. We've been in the same pod a couple of times. I. I 
you can't say enough about uh, his progress. I mean, he is an, he, he's become an elite, elite player in this league, and obviously McDavid has been from day one, so now you get two elite players on one line. Um, it'll be a challenge. It's a challenge for every, anybody that faces him any night, um, but I think we've got really good players too, and I think we've, we've got a centerman that loves these matchups, and uh, I can't wait to watch it here tonight. You just went through that with them on the ice, and then you went through the deal with seeing Ken in, in other colors and another rink, but to have him back here, just on a personal level, what will that be like tonight? Well, I think it's I think I think it's awesome. I've got an unbelievable amount of respect for Ken Holland. Um, I think what, he, what his record uh, with the Detroit Red Wings speaks for itself. It's uh, remarkable, um, absolutely remarkable, and and I think uh, he's he's an, he probably even better than he's been as a GM. He's an even better man. Like he's a great person. Cindy's a great person, and and um, I've, I've got a I believe a great friendship with him, and I certainly have tons of respect for him. And um, you know, I had a chance to chat with him in Edmonton, and I'll. We'll get a chance to chat with them today and then you know our teams are going to go out and play each other.